though it presents its own set of challenges, I've looked forward to taking the day and making it a Spurgeon day. <laughs> In a video sort of way. <laughs> In other words, I have been wanting to and prayed about for some time now going back to the reality of the devotionals that we have had in Vidivo in such a way that we could stylize and customize for those who might look at Spurgeon and say, oh no, I don't understand it, the King Jameth that Godeth giveth to Spurgeoneth. <laughs> because there are lots of people that look at someone like Spurgeon and they go, why does anybody read him? <laughs> and frankly, I understand their point of view. Because unless you really enjoy English, sometimes some of the ways that people in centuries past have expressed themselves may be for some people in the centuries future to maybe understand or comprehend in some way. But for most people, every day they seem to not really get a hold of Spurgeon and the beauty of what he was doing in training and teaching pastors, elders, deacons, and those who were called to the ministry to do the work that God has called them to do. And so he would inspire them by his oratory, by his vernacular, by his words, as it were, and his word images, by the things that he envisioned, by the things that he said by the way that he said them. And so people in his day were very much inspired by Mr. Spurgeon as he was inspired by his teacher, as he was a dean, so to speak. He was a pastor of pastors. He was a teacher of teachers. He was a man given after God and God's own heart that he would inspire others to follow and press after God. In our modern days, we have people like Tozer who do that for us, or I can't think of someone else quite up to Tozer at this current time. But Tozer is one of those types of men of God that inspired people to pursue hard after God. And that's what Spurgeon does. And that's why Morning and Evening had become such a classic for most people to read. But as I read him, and as I enjoyed Spurgeon, because I am a writer and I enjoy vocabulary, there were times where I went, huh? <laughs> Say what? <laughs> so I know sometimes if you don't get it, where you're coming from. So we at Vidivo take the time to, though it's challenging at best, to read it as it is, but then to add what we see as God teaching us in the day that we live in, which is today. Because we can't plan on tomorrow and we can't talk about the past, but we can talk about where we are today as we hear his voice, as we walk in his way, as we do his will. So, though we may be challenged in how we do it to start with, once we get rolling along, praise the Lord, I'm looking forward to daily, morning and evening, though tonight we may not do Spurgeon because some of the days were a little mixed up. We will do morning and evening with Vidivo, choosing to take the day and to dedicate it to the glory of God our Father, but in honor of the man that God sent to us, that was humble before his elders and humble before all of those who came to him for teaching, who was simply called Spurgeon. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, 1 John 2, 1. If any man sin, we have an advocate. Yes, though we sin, we have him still. John does not say, if any man sin, he has forfeited his advocate. No, but we have an advocate. Sinners though we are. All the sin that a believer ever did, or can be allowed to commit, cannot destroy his interest in the Lord Jesus Christ as his advocate. An advocate, we know, is a lawyer. So, yes, we have a lawyer with the Father. We have someone who is for us, not against us. The name here given to our Lord is suggestive. Jesus. Ah, then he is an advocate such as we need. 
For Jesus is the name of those whose business and delight it is to save. They shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. His sweetest name implies his success. The very nature of who he is is in the word that he is called, Jesus. Next, it is Jesus Christ, Christos, the anointed, Messiah, the anointed one. This shows his authority to plead, his given right, his sovereignty. The Christ has a right to plead for he is the Father's own appointed advocate and elected priest, given by God himself. If he were of our choosing, he might fail. But if God has laid help upon one that is mighty, we may safely lay our trouble where God has laid his help. He is Christ, therefore authorized. He is Christ, therefore qualified. For the anointing has fully fitted him for his work. He can plead so as to move the heart of God and prevail. What words of tenderness, what sentences of persuasion will the anointed use when he stands up to plead for me? One more letter of his name remains, Jesus Christ the Righteous. This not only is his character, but his plea. It is his character, and if the Righteous One be my advocate, then my cause is good, or he would not have espoused it. It is his plea, for he meets the charge of unrighteousness against me by the plea that he is righteous. He declares himself my substitute and puts his obedience to my account. My soul, thou hast a friend well fitted to be thine advocate, to be thy lawyer, to be thy substitution. He cannot but succeed. Leave thyself entirely in his hands such beautiful words that flow from the lips of a man who knows that God is his advocate, the Son of God, even Jesus. For if we were to say and to plead in some theology way for our own righteousness and to try to act like we could be good, then we know no good would come of it. For we cannot do what is good and pleasing in the sight of God. But we know we can turn to the one who does plead in the sight of God, who stands before him even now, who is seated in the heavenlies, who is our lawyer and advocate, who says, I am his righteousness. I am your righteousness. Such is Jesus for you today. For as you are in Jesus and Jesus is in you, then his righteousness is your righteousness. You have no righteousness of yourself. There is nothing good in you the Bible declares. But in you, if the Son has indeed set himself on his throne in the heart of every man, woman, and child that is called upon his name to be saved, then he is our righteousness. He is our salvation. He is the one to whom we turn to, for in the name of the Son we shall be saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but would have eternal life because the eternal life is righteousness in Jesus Christ because Jesus said this is eternal life that they should know me and that they would know he who sent me and why has God sent his son into the world to condemn it no but to be the advocate for it to be the lawyer to it to be the one who would stand before the father and plead the righteousness that he has accomplished in his death and resurrection. For God has looked down upon his own son and said, yes, I accept your sacrifice for the sin that man commits. So he is our righteousness. He is our forgiveness. He is our mercy. He is our grace. For you see, if it's not all about Jesus, then it's none about salvation. But if it is about salvation, then it's all about Jesus. And so you find in Jesus everything you need for salvation. You find in Jesus everything you need for eternal life. You find in Jesus everything. For without Jesus, you have nothing.